and my phone rings, and uh, I told my wife, says, just tell me you're on your way. <laughs> now, come on. How many, how many people are going to be at a Windross truck <laughs> wanting, and because he told me, he said, these people want their truck signed by mm -hmm. Okay. I pulled in, I was, I, I couldn't believe it. Did I, you find the first part? No. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today for another new and exciting episode from Stock Car Facts, which we try to post every Tuesday at about noon. Or you can watch some of our previous episodes. Here at Stock Car Facts, we would really love to recreate the race day sights, smells, and sounds that we first experienced for ourselves in 1974 at Michigan International Speedway. But unfortunately, you know that's not possible here. However, we can do the next best thing in that we can share with you what happened at these events and we can talk to those people who created those memories or, well, you know, those facts. So we'd appreciate it if you sit back and relax and enjoy this latest episode today of Stock Car Facts with me, your host, Kevin Schwarzy. Oh, and by the way, later, you'll have a chance to comment on this content. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button as well as the follow bell to be notified of brand new shows right here. And we'd appreciate it if you'd share this on all of your social media platforms. Thank you. Today on Stock Car Facts. We're on the uh, show and tell portion of the show. And uh, the first one I want to look at is uh, this, this headline from uh, the Keystone Auto News. Uh, Bobby Gerhardt Jr. makes it three in a row. At Linda's Speedway, that yeah. had to be <laughs> 1977. You were nine, what, 19, 20 years old, something like that. Yeah. Um, listen, I can't, I can't speak enough for the importance in our sport, and it gets overlooked to a tremendous degree by everybody, by by all of us. Um, and I'm not going to say especially the media, but uh, I don't think there's as much emphasis put on entry-level racing as there really should be. Um, without the tracks and, and, and without being involved in a racetrack, you could never know the commitment to what it takes to put on an event, to put on a Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night event. And, <clears throat> and the pain that these racetracks go through to actually put the event on and sacrifice that they do. Um, these promoters and track owners and people that work there have the same desire and love for the sport that we as competitors do um, and, and, and get very little credit for it. Um, and now the advent of social media and everybody's that's correct. easily criticized and it's one-sided. Yeah. It and I've seen it correct. They, some they, tracks. They, they, sure. They bitch about the noise and complain about the dust and, you know, the hot dog used to be a dollar fifty, now it's a dollar seventy five. That's or correct. Whatever. However, don't realize what's happened to the racetracks. The insurances have have gone through the roof. The cost of doing everything as we know it, it, it is tremendous. Or you talk uh, to Dreger, one rain out. It's. However, uh, my career and and tens of thousands of other young kids who aspire to be race drivers. <clears throat> uh, start an entry level racing which is what that was yeah uh, that was one year out of high school four or five of my high school friends sitting around one night thinking what well, man what what are we going to do and uh, you know <laughs> i said i want to race you know how are we going to do that but to tell you how it started that car got built because each of us, I think, put 30 or $40 together, mm. bought a 68 Camaro, <laughs> made it a race car, and there it is. And and uh, <clears throat> we missed the probably the first um, four or five races of the year because we, we just didn't have the ability to get it done. 
and um, got in and just got on a streak of, of winning. I'm not sure how many we ended up winning that year, but um, that car was ultra competitive. Um, and and that helped me with that a little bit. That helped me with that a lot. <laughs> and just, just, you know, some things happened that, that it, it was, I guess, just maybe, I'm not going to say meant to be, but a lot of fate turned into that race car and, and <laughs> put put it put it in victory lane a lot um, and just actually put a put a drive in me to continue to go forward you know but and, it but it starts at entry level racetracks across the country and bill big go venturini uh, famously talks about how his dad said you can't live here and race which i guess people would think that means he wasn't encouraging enough but it sounds like your dad was your dad was, uh, he didn't he didn't discourage you. It sounds like he was behind you. Well, sort of. <laughs> to be honest with you, he, he wasn't a big fan of me racing. Uh, neither was my mother. Um, that I can see. <laughs> only, <laughs> only because of, um, I, I think my dad looking in the future, really what it, what it was turning into. Um, and, and my dad wasn't really involved in a lot of my career. Uh, until we got to a, to a point uh, that we we started racing on a national level, and then he then he came to and was, the was a, labor. yeah to see the fruit of our labor. Hmm. But this is this is a real commitment, and then whether you do modifieds or whether you do uh, entry level or do this, you're you're at it seven days a week. Yeah. Speaking of of, of national level, this. This this shot right here is from eighty. Or, uh, sorry, ninety one at Flat Rock. Yes. So, when well, talk about a commitment, you're going, you know, <clears throat> Daytona, Talladega, to ninety one Topeka for the first time, Flat Rock or Crash Lock, Rock, like we always yeah. call her, Kill Card, whatever, you know. Now you and then you're doing. Uh, 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 I'm trying to think of ninety one schedule, uh, Talladega twice. Twice. Atlanta, yes. you know. So you got everything. Yes. In the dirt tracks, you got Springfield. You yep. got the coin. You got. Everything, you know, and, uh, you know, you guys, okay, I don't know if that's, that looks like a short track car. <laughs> that, that actually, that car I got from Lee Raymond. It was, it was Lee's, uh, uh, short track cow car. And, um, we wanted to be a little bit, and they were building a new car. We wanted to be a little bit more competitive. And like I said, at that time, you know, the Arca series was predominantly, you know, three link cars. Uh, and, right. and the Hal car was a was a staple. I mean, everybody had Hal cars. Yeah, uh, it was it was really what you had to have. You know, of course. Then, as time went on, you know the 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 Arca series, the cars that 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 you could only run were exact duplicates of the cars that run in the NASCAR. So I know it was actually a smart thing to do. Yeah, really. Yeah, because they were so plentiful. Yeah. You got into the uh, collectible business on the ground floor, it looks like there. I never saw that. If you got any land, I'll buy one from you. <laughs> I'm I've, got, I, I've got a few of them. And I, uh, how, uh, how that started, uh, you, you will see uh, on a lot of my cars, uh, one of my early sponsors was Omar Landis. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Omar was a, uh, he had owned the Garden Spot All Auction, which is still in business today. Oh, okay. Um, he was also president of the National Auctioneers Association uh, countrywide for a few years and was very involved in the collectibles. And, um, wow, okay. So, I did not know that. So, and, and you can see, on, even on that car, you can probably find pictures of that car. It says J. Armour Landis Enterprises on that, on, on the race car. Uh, big race fan, by the way. Uh, was there in 99 in the infield. Um, okay. <laughs> and, 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 wa and watched that. Um, however, this came out in the late 80s. And okay. uh, Omar called me one day and said, listen, I want you to pick out something. And I thought, like, what would that be? And he said, stop over. So I swung over and he looked at He had a book and he was talking about these Winross trucks. And and, uh, and I thought, yeah, okay. He said, well, I'm going to do a series for you. Okay? And uh, I don't know how many were in the series, but the, the key to them was to not do too many. Right. Because then... It's got to it, be it, some type of limited it's collectible. It's got type of a limited yeah. collectible. And I'm not sure what the limited, what the number was. I'd have been 500. 
Might have been something That's like that. That's a low that. room. Wow. Okay. Might have been five. Might have been 750. I'm really not aware of what it was, but it, it, it wasn't thousands of them. Right, right. That's... But it might have been 750. And, and I'm thinking, okay, sure. <laughs> oh, he says it's these, these, this Windrush thing is unbelievable. He said it, it, you can't imagine what it's like. Okay. So <laughs> he, get, he got the trucks. And he said, come over, your trucks are here. I came over, and he gave me a dozen of them. And I thought, man, these are really cool looking. Of course, I had to get NASCAR approval. Of course. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so after the truck was yeah. built, yeah. I go back in the NASCAR trailer, and I show him a truck, and I said, are we all okay with this? And I left him one. Bill Jr. says, hey, that's cool, he said. <laughs> I'm all right with it, he said. So, okay. And I might have had... 15, I think he might have gave me 15 or 20 of them. And I gave them to salesmen that I had and people. And I don't know that I ever ended up with one of them. I think there's a, I think there's a, a few of them behind me. If not, I, I, I might be one in the office. But, but anyway, it just kind of went right by me. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. And I'm busy doing my thing. Right. And, and right. That's and, lower. Uh, that's over here. <laughs> over here. I'm so over here. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. Omar says, uh, we're going to we're gonna do a sale at a really big motel that has a convention area, and we're going to do a Windrush sale. And he says, I need you to be there. This is late December. I'm running. sure. I said, oh, right, count me in. I said, <laughs> I'll be there. So sure enough, the day comes. Of course, I, you know, I'm not going to say I had no plans to be there, but it was <laughs> out of mind. I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually in Philadelphia. Okay, I'm actually in Philadelphia. Oh okay, <laughs> Where are you I'm actually buying <laughs> buying some cars and trucks in Philadelphia. Three or four dealers I worked with at that time, and and uh, phone rings, and uh, it's Omar. He says, "Just tell me you're on your way." <laughs> and I went, "Shit, I am now." <laughs> okay, about how long might this trip take? I'd have to say, if I guess it. At least an hour. <laughs> Put your foot on it, he said. So it just so happens, at a day before that, Arca had just come out with a little postcards. Yeah, you remember yeah, little postcards. Cards, yeah. And 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 I had a box of them in my truck. It just happened that the, the day before they were they were with me. So I fly back, and on the way back, I'm thinking, no, 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 come on. How many, how many people are going to be at a Winross truck auction, really, <laughs> wanting, and because he told me, he said, these people want their truck signed by you. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. I pulled in. I was, I, I couldn't believe it. Did I, you find I, a place to park? No. <laughs> no, no, I, I parked uh, three or four blocks away. Literally, this convention hall was packed, probably 12, 1,300 people, bidding on one at a time when Ross trucks that he had. He oh. had he had an array <laughs> of hundreds of trucks mm -hmm. that they were auctioning off, just like a car auction. Mm -hmm. And he's keeping he's keeping calling me right to how far away how far away so <laughs> i'm giving him time slots time slots right so he lined the people up that one in my truck signed there were literally close to a hundred people there wow with the truck with that truck do you remember how much it was per truck no i'm gonna get to i'm gonna get to the sour note shortly <laughs> okay <laughs> so i signed every one of them trucks on the top, and I gave everybody a card. They could put it in their box, and they, everybody was happy. Then Omar brings me in, and we're going to auction off my truck. Okay. To my amazement, this truck does fifteen hundred dollars. Wow. <laughs> I'm thinking. I gave away how many of these trucks? <laughs> <laughs> As as fast as and so and I started <laughs> I started getting calls from people all around the world wanting these trucks, wow. including Phil Parsons, who to this day reminds me I never got him one. 
<laughs> Phil calls me and says, dude, what's this deal with this truck? And I'm thinking, okay, I got a lot of them, right? You know, what do you, what do you want? Right, right. Oh, no, no, your Winross truck. <sighs> <laughs> and But as fads would go, uh, it, it, it has... It has changed course quite a bit, yeah. And and uh, but it was an amazing fact. It really was. It was an amazing era. It was. And there are still collectors. I think the last Maybe time I, I I still see my truck advertised, but it's greatly diminished at this point. That's when I bought. Them. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't buy them for a hundred bucks and fifty bucks. I bought them when they were ten bucks. Yeah, like, 15, 10, 15, am, 20 you know. bucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah so but, it's neat you're talking about Mr. Omar because now I'm going to segue into some of your other backers like James Chevrolet. James Chevrolet, yes. you, you know. Yeah. And, uh, maybe we, talk about all the people that I've, I've seen on your car regularly throughout the years. They're always somewhere on your race car. Uh, I've been very fortunate. Been been blessed to be able. One thing about being in Central PA, a lot of race fans, a lot of race fans. And seem very loyal. And and sure, not only Central PA people are very loyal, uh, very hardworking, um, and and I've had people that that really supported me for a long, long time. All your crew guys, um, they all they're all the same faces. I had for twenty uh, years. Listen, I, I I spoke <laughs> with a with a guy this morning that. Came up, true story, came up to buy a van from me in the early 90s. And um, uh, as it turned out, he had a small construction company and um, was growing. And uh, we started chatting, and he, he looked at me and said, Ted, Ted, you're, you're the guy that stock car races. Yep, that would be me. Holy shit, he said. Big fan. Big fan of stock car racing, and and um, and I said, "Well, Jesus!" I said, Man, "You're welcome to come along sometime." At that point, I, I we'd go to we'd go to races with two or three people. Period. And somebody wants to come along. Guess what? They're welcome to come along, but they're gonna they're gonna help. They're gonna work. They're gonna sure. be involved. And I told him that. And he <clears> called <throat> me the next day. He says, "Man, were you serious?" "Sure, I'm serious." I called him back. Hey, can I bring a friend? <laughs> well, a friend, a friend, and and Mr. Martin Andy uh, flew to Caldega. Um, we ran well. Uh, they enjoyed the crap out of it. Uh, his business grew over the next 10, 15 years. Uh, he became a he became a career sponsor of mine. As my career grew, so did his business grew. He moved a, a big branch of his company to Florida. They build mm. they build Wawa stores. In fact. They're they, all over the place up here now. <laughs> they build the Wawa store wow. right across the street from the Speedway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right across it. He, he was involved. Yet, but I'm waiting. <laughs> it, I love them. Right across the street there, yeah. And um, and, and wow. look, they, they became career sponsors. I've been fortunate to have a lot of them. Um, and, I, and I think from, and listen, they, they come on board because they understand that they're they're supporting something that we're going to do everything that we can to do the best that we can. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing about one thing about my race program, whenever I took a sponsor's dollar, every bit of what I ever generated went right back into the into the program. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot to fuel these cars. More of a chatty sitting out there in the porch, and the, oh no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it obviously went, you know. <laughs> no, I. I, 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 I I drive a little wagon. I'm not not a real flashy guy. <laughs> By the way, speaking about crew guys and you know, hey, you know, want some help? When you said come and help, and told me that that sure. one time, you can see I'm white collar, so you yeah. didn't want my mechanical help. <laughs> Trust me, you you did all right without me helping mechanically. Um, the reason I want to ask you about this is because you're wearing a Hooters Cup hat there. Yeah, and um, looking back on that, um, Hooters is such a very short part of the of the series history but what do you remember about that i don't get the chance to uh, talk to a lot of people that were there for that um i mean i you know i'd heard rumors that bob brooks wanted to buy arca and you know and, and then uh you know because our uh, logan just yeah when i talked to i don't know if you remember wendy bartek mm -hmm. uh you know it was great to me 
um, I called her on the phone. I said, what happened? She said, well, we, uh, we got the facts. And so we called Bob, and he said, read the facts. Well, can we talk about this? And she said, Bob said, well, read the facts. So she said, well, we read the facts. <laughs> and it was over that quick. But um, what do you think Arca would have been like if, uh, if Hooters would have stayed? Because they went on and created their own series. Correct. And, and put a lot of money into it. A lot of money. I mean, but when Bob passed away, you know, the kids didn't like racing. They like golf. Right. Um, but, you know, Gene Cox was involved. Uh, I mean, they had... I thought at the time in the '90s they were doing what, you know, NASCAR is doing now. You know, you, have, you know the, the the Hooters girls that are not, you know, too, you know, everything hanging out. You know, they had the signage, they had the the brand awareness, they had everything, stores and everything. What do you what do you think? Well, you can, you can shoulda, coulda, woulda a lot of things about anything, whether it would be. Race teams or, or sanctioning bodies. That's right. You only or, ran one Hooters Cup race, the or, Daytona race. I forgot. That's <laughs> right. or, or series. Uh, naturally, I, I, I think at some point, if there would have been a little bit different direction um, prior to what happened with Bob, that the end result would have been a, a little bit different. However, uh, listen, I, I, I think, I think in 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 after Bob's death, um, the timing was just right for the sport. Just say it. <laughs> to, 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 the sport man passed Bob. By. <laughs> it, the Bob time, was old school. <laughs> the timing, the timing was right for the sport to go big, and it and it did. And and it and it listen it what, what ended up being the the Arca Remax series and, um, <clears throat> however it could have it happened earlier it probably would have anybody that knew anybody that knew Bob it was just um, you'll never forget him absolutely <laughs> um, and not to not to paint him out as this big ogre even though that's why I remember him but yeah. I'll just be honest with you uh, I asked Drager one day in the mid nineties I said. You know, because he's the lineage. You know, you figure he's going to sure. take it over. Well, I asked him. I said, "Are you are you ready to take this over?" And he said, "Not really." He said, I, "I like what I'm doing." At the time, he was coaching football locally. You know, um, and and you could tell that you can tell Ron's. You know, he he does well at it, but he's not necessarily comfortable in front of the camera. Right. You go to Flat Rock on a local night, and he's at the pit gate. He's the pit gate. Sure, yeah. I've seen that. But I had people, 95, 96, saying that we're not running ARC again. I'll, I'll say it myself. You don't have to say it. We're not running ARC again as long as Bob's logo's here. We just can't. We're not doing it. We'll go run somewhere else. He, you know. he, had, a, uh, <clears throat> he had a challenging side to him. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would. Uh, <laughs> You're not running for politician around here. You'd be pretty good at it. <laughs> uh, I mean, he had, a, he had a very challenging side he to did. him. Although... Uh, the, there were times one on one that that uh, yeah yeah one, be, one on one that he was he was uh, very Glenn, very Glenn Burr and him were very down to earth you know and and um, yeah. I don't know how, how how I feel and 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 <laughs> probably how the rest of the world feels could you wouldn't want to be put it on camera uh, <laughs> right however Bob had a he had a very human side to him too. He did. I mean, we we had a we had an issue at a Talladega race that, with without a <laughs> doubt, without a doubt, would have been my first victory, without a doubt. And he took it away. And he took it away over a pit call. Basically, gave me a stop and go penalty for touching the white line on exit leaving the pits okay oh boy <laughs> Talladega at that time was white mm -hmm. there was no black mm -hmm. you follow me there you could not see any lines it was <laughs> listen it was obvious what was going to happen in this race and it just went our way period just went our way and I was in my earlier day I had a tremendous temper <laughs> and uh, had I been able to get the red hair, had I, had I been able, listen, had I been able to get 
close to Bob, it may not have, I may have regretted it. Do you follow me? Sure, sure. Okay. Four days later, I mean, it wasn't here yet. I was in a, uh, another facility on the other side of Lebanon and had gone to pick up some parts for the guys. And I come back, and I saw a funny car in the parking lot, and I come back, and there's Bob sitting in my office with his, wow. feet, with his <laughs> feet propped up. And we had a we had a man-to-man -man chat. Okay. And you gotta give it to him that he showed up personally. I'll, I'll give he him did. that. I'll give him he that. Did. He did. And and so did I. Yeah. When it was over, yeah. so did I. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and from that day forward, Bob and I were on a different level. Because we, we, we aired a lot of things. And uh, he knew that things were getting away from me. He knew that. And he knew, I believe he really knew that it was going to outgrow him in a hurry. And um, the writing but, was on the wall. I mean, not, not again, not to paint him as an older, right. but the, you know, the, like the, again, there's another name you'll probably remember, the Gazaways. Yes. They were like that too. Mm -hmm. Yelling and screaming and, you know, rah, 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 you know, that whole thing in your face. You know, in the 90s, you know, it was just, there was not that kind of sport yeah. anymore. Yeah. It just, I mean, it had so long passed. Uh, uh, I forget who told the joke. <clears throat> um, I, don't know, I don't know if you heard it. Um, race car driver dies and goes to heaven, and uh, St. Peter meets him at the gate. <clears throat> and he says, well, you know, you, you know, what what you were on earth, you know, you, you can choose what you want up here in heaven. So they go to the local racetrack. And uh, <clears throat> they get into the pits, and there's a guy with PT on the back of his shirt. And the driver says to St. Peter, well, who's that? Oh, well, he always wanted to be a pit steward, so we made him a pit steward. Oh, okay. So there's another uh, uh, guy. He's getting ready to climb into a car, and he has RC on his back, uh, or RD on his back. And the driver says, oh, I, I assume he wanted to be a race car driver. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so um, they walk around a little more, and uh, uh, <laughs> they see a, a man with uh, 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 somebody with BL on their back. Well, okay, I got the other two, but who's the BL? And St. Peter goes, oh, that's God. He always wanted to be Bob Logan. <laughs> Glenn Brewer heard that joke. Went straight over to Loga and told it, and from what Glenn told me, Loga busted out laughing. <laughs> so, like you say, one minute he could be nose to nose, oh, yeah. the next minute he could be, you know, cutting up. Now, now talk about intense. You you know, that look on your face. <laughs> like I said before, Bobby Gerhardt was a very intense. Never seen that picture. Yeah, I uh, I don't know if I you know uh, uh, I don't know if I. I that was at the end of 96, and uh, the magazine ceased at the end right. of 96. So I didn't come for a while after that, so I didn't probably have a chance to give it to you. But that's that's in the garage at Atlanta, end of the season, yep. uh, 96. But uh, you can't see your eyes, but, you know, behind it, I've seen that look a 100 times. Mm. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> and it was funny that you brought up the fact that, you know, you, you could have had a temper, you could have been very focused, you know. But, I mean, in a way, it shows the passion. Absolutely. I, I think that... Look, I said, I think any any really good, any athlete that takes a sport to a level, no matter where he is, that, that, that's going to have any level of success is going to be passionate about it. And, you know, when you're passionate about it, look, it, 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 things come out of you that in a normal conversation, it isn't you. It's, it's the intensity <laughs> It's the intensity of what you do things at. That's all. Um, you haven't asked me, do I miss it? Not yet. <laughs> you can address that now if you like. No, it's okay. I'll wait for you to ask me. <laughs> do you miss it? Absolutely. I knew sure you would. I do. Yeah. I knew you would. Yeah. I mean, I, and people ask me, I get asked a lot, what part of it do you miss the most? Uh, it's pretty simple, the competition. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's what everybody says. And that's what, look, that's what led me there. Do you sure. understand? And uh, the <clears throat> opportunity to compete and, you know, the privilege to compete. Do you follow me? I mean, yeah. look, we live in a world where you can grow up to be a race driver. You can you can grow up to do anything you want to do. But 
um, for a kid to want to be a race driver today, gosh, um, <laughs> there's so many right. obstacles. So many obstacles, right? So many things that have to work just right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And 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 I'm not saying you're this, but <laughs> uh, I don't know if you watched uh, uh, Dale Jr.'s uh, show on YouTube. So um, Kenny Wallace uh, was on the show, and um, they were talking about you know his brother Rusty and Dale's dad, <clears throat> and, and and you know Kenny he's just blunt he'll just say it like he says it, and he said um, I forget he was relating a story, and he said the reason my brother was successful is because he was an you know, and he said, I think the reason, I'm not calling you that, I'm just saying, and Dale Jr. said the same thing about his dad. And what they mean by that is singularly focused. Yeah. So they come off like they're like that. Yeah. They're not necessarily, I mean, they may be, they may not be, but they're singularly focused. So it may seem like, well, I could give a shit about you, but I care about this. Right. And, and, and like you said, you almost have to be like that to be a winner. You know, you look like, you, I think, <clears throat> I, I think what happens to, and and I've been I've been accused, not accused of that, but I think a lot of people um, misread me, uh, only because at, at many times you become you become so focused on what you're there to do, and and picturing in your mind anything that you can do to prevent anything from going wrong. That you, that you what if this thing to death? You know, <clears throat> did I do this? Did I do this? Did I do this? Uh, are are we ready here in this area? And and as look as a driver, as an owner, as a guy responsible for paying all the bills, majority of the guy you got a lot of balls. Uh, 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 listen, <laughs> the guy that drove the rig there. <clears throat> do you follow me? Many times I, I saw I, you pulling out a lot. I've had you behind I, the wheel. I've had a lot on my plate, and you know you're 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 dealing with people that you brought, whether it's five people or twenty people. You have sponsors. You have you know the crew have the rooms. That you you have multiple fit? issues to deal with. And oh, by the way, I got to drive. And and by the <laughs> way, you're there to do something that you want to focus on, and that's all you want to do. Yeah. So, yeah, I can see at times I probably came off short. I, I probably didn't have the time to, to uh, you know, befriend the people that I, that I should have or spend time, or, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, but, you be, but you become so involved in it sure. that you're, you're just, you're, you're mentally out of space. Do you follow me? Oh, absolutely. And when you do yeah. this. I wouldn't do so much. Yeah. Well, two compliments along those lines. <clears throat> one is, like I said, when I first walked in, we saw each other. I said, you're one of the most, you know, requested people I get. I heard from Bobby Garrett. How is he doing? What's he doing? And I, I don't know. And so there's that. And then another, uh, I forgot to tell you this earlier. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll start it out by saying it like this. Uh, Brad Smith blames you for the wreck. He was in a Talladega <laughs> because he was following you. And you were, you barely missed, missed that wreck. I mean, missed no hyperbole, inches. Missed it. And he almost made it through by inches. But he said later, and, and I'll send you the link he talked about. I broke that down with him, that, that wreck. He said, we're coming back up through the field. He said, I forgot I'm going to get right on Bobby Gerhardt's back bumper. He said, he's won a bunch of these. He said, if, if anybody knows their way around this place, it's him. He said, I figure if I can stay on his bumper, I should be all right. So two compliments. <laughs> you couldn't have been that big a jerk. <laughs> so, so the very last one here uh, and our, our uh, show and tell, and I know that you're going to think, what the heck is he showing me this for? But uh, maybe to kind of uh, bring it full circle. That was also at Atlanta in 96, November 96. Yeah. And you're like, I'm tying my shoe. What, what is he? You're talking. And I got three shots, you and Daryl talking here. And this is the middle one. Yeah. Darrell Waltrip had, you know, by this time he had he'd won all the races, he's going to win a cup, which was right. what eighty four. Yes, well established as an icon in the sport. Three right. championships at the time he was an owner. You know, he owned a truck team, his own cup team. I mean, household name. You and him were talking, and he's waiting on you to tie your shoe. <laughs> and then you guys went back to your conversation. So my point is, is 
here's a guy like Darrell Waltrip waiting on you to hear what you've got to say. Mm-hmm. So when you look back on it, and this is 96, before you won anything. Right. So at that time, you know, for a guy like Daryl Waltrip to, to, to wait on you to do, you know, to do something as, as, an innate, as innate as tying your shoe to hear what more you have to say, um, what does that make you think of, that, that a guy like that wants to hear what Bobby Gerhardt thinks? Even back then, like if you quit that day and mm-hmm. didn't run another lick, you know, here you and Daryl are still you know, conversing. Well, you know, listen, along the way, it doesn't matter how successful uh, um, any of these guys are. They're human beings. And But you get my point. He could be doing something else. Let, let, me, let, me, let me make my point here. Yeah. Most of these guys that are successful, including DW, they don't miss much. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. And and uh, I'll go back to that Topeka race that I think Daryl might have won. That was 92. Yeah. Okay. Um, Honored blazes that day. <laughs> all right. Really hot. Really, 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 really hot. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> we're, we're doing our last fuel check run, and we ran, I don't know, my brother can tell the story better and bill always did that but we're doing our fuel run and uh i don't know how many laps we ran but um bill went to top it off with a five gallon can and um <clears throat> but anyway the the at the end of the day the, the striking thing was um we were getting unbelievable fuel mileage for a couple of reasons we could probably go 14 or 15 laps more, seriously, than wow. any of the good guys, any of <laughs> any of the top guys. And I'm not sure where we qualified. We may have qualified um, an eighth, ninth, something like that, far from a slow car. Right, okay. right. Were the fastest? <clears throat> no. But so, so DW comes strolling over. Not only did he know we didn't put five gallons in that car, they knew how many laps we ran and did the mileage run and said, that that can't be right. You're getting such and you can run this many laps. And Billy went, no, we can run two more than that. And as it turned out, I led that race. Okay. For quite for quite a while because of that, and had that race gone, the, the race actually went against my segment of fuel and went in their segment. Do you follow me? Mm-hmm. And even though we finished fourth, mm-hmm. we had a legitimate shot. Had it gone my way instead of theirs, mm-hmm. we're we're three quarter, we're half a lap ahead of them. Mm-hmm. You follow me? And mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> And my point is, they miss nothing. And they come and communicate. And <clears throat> when you communicate back at the same level they are, this is back what, you, what you were talking about earlier. This is what you build. You follow me. Mm-hmm. You, you, you build that type of relationship. And, and look, I, I did this for a long time. Our team has been around for a long time. Um, we, <laughs> at, at times, we, we did some very unique things and, and probably got noticed for a lot of people, but, uh, and your point with people being hard to get to, um, like, like in Dale's case, again, so laser focused. And, and if I knew anything about Dale senior, not that I knew him well, but he was a man of short, a few words. He just didn't, just didn't, yeah. just didn't talk much. Yeah. I mean, he just didn't. He just didn't say much. He, he, um, the day, uh, the day my dad got an opportunity to get on the racetrack, we we're getting everything loaded up, and I walked in old Daytona's men's, you know, bathroom, and you know, taking a whiz, and the guy comes up behind me, and it was Dale Senior, and puts his hands on me, and he says, "Listen to me. That might have been one of the neatest things I've seen." He said, "Both of you will remember that for a long, long time," and and uh, just. Neat. 
and I think that's what's missing today in motorsports yeah. is the human side. Yeah. I think I, not we got that we got to see it a lot with Dale Senior and because he was and you know rightly so yeah. he was pretty well guarded, but and it was a lot easier I think then to get to know people like that. Like mm-hmm. for example, I remember Harry Melling used to have the, the the lakeside party and Bill Elliott was just there and they threw him in the lake. You know, and, and fans could come by, and yeah. and it, you know, no wonder he won fan, you know, fan vote most, ninety-eight years ago. Most, most of these, most of these stars in the sport, including guys like Benny Parsons, very, very down-to-earth guys oh, yeah. that came, you know, that came through through the the sport the hard way. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the, you know, one of my memories of the, at, at Daytona with, especially with Benny. Uh, we had just won our, I don't know, third or fourth pole in a row. And I'm leaving the racetrack. And um, we, just, we were the last people to leave, as usual. And I'm walking out of the gate, and I hear Gerhardt. And it was Benny's voice. Mm-hmm. You could just picture that, <laughs> you know, right? And I looked over, and he's just sitting on bench. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay. Walked over and sat down. He said, Sad day today. And I said, Okay. Not to be he, said, <laughs> he said, He said, Listen. He said, One of, <laughs> one of my fondest memories, and he said, I think, to be honest with you, it was the reason. That Benny became Benny, that you know. He said, I came here and won two or three consecutive polls <laughs> at Daytona. And he said, you just beat that record. <laughs> and he was not happy, although he congratulated me. <laughs> and he just said, enjoy your day. Mm-hmm. I thought, wow. Oh. You know, <laughs> however, Benny was a great guy, you know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we've had some very, very unique moments over the years with uh, with guys at that level, really, you know, <laughs> and, and I just that look, I my, my career, I've, I was blessed, was very fortunate to be you around spanned it all too. Oh, yeah. To be around that long, to be around, uh, you know, that long to see the sport grow so big. And, and, and just to, just to be able to meet all the guys, you know, it's fantastic. Right. Yeah. 